Welcome to Abyss Mix 23, an enlightening interview series organized by the Science Association of Royal College. Today we have the privilege of engaging in a stimulating conversation with a distinguished guest, a chemistry professor representing the esteemed chemistry department of Columbia University, whose career has been intricately intertwined with the realm of chemical sciences and academia. Our guest has made significant contribution to the field of chemistry and imparting knowledge to the next generation of scientific mind. We eagerly anticipate an insightful discussion on the cross-section of chemistry and academia. Welcome, Professor Rohini De Silva. Good morning, Professor Rohini De Silva. Thank you for joining with us today. Could you start by telling our audience a bit about your professional background experience? Uh, good morning, Shian. Uh, as you are asking a professional background, I would like to start the discussion with my tertiary education. So I graduated from the Columbia University with first class honours in chemistry. And then I proceeded to do my PhD at the University of Cambridge in England. And during my PhD, I pursued my research work on organometallic chemistry and catalysis. And there I obtained a sound knowledge in advanced techniques available for synthetic chemistry and also advanced spectroscopic methods available to detect molecules and also uh, X-ray, single X-ray crystallographic analysis. So it, those are the kind of you know skills that I have developed during my PhD work. And then after completing my PhD studies, I just came back to Sri Lanka uh, because we were professional lecturers at the Department of Chemistry. And then I served the university again for seven years. And then after that one, I got an opportunity to go to America, to USA, to do my postdoctoral research. And there I was very privileged and honored uh, to, uh, to work at the Center for Advanced Microstructures and Devices as a research fellow. And that's affiliated to the Louisiana State University in America. So we were there for two years. And there I exposed myself to advanced materials. It's just basically the materials and all these high-tech characterization techniques of materials. As, uh, and also, you know, like, I mean, particularly, I got myself exposed to nanotechnology and nanoscience. And because I exposed to many various fields in research in chemistry, so my current research, you know, it just covers a broad spectrum of advanced materials. And these advanced materials, uh, there are many applications of these advanced materials and namely to f name few of them, there are advanced materials in water purification, advanced materials in drug delivery and sustained and targeted drug delivery. And then uh, the, we are also looking at the electrospun nanomaterials for wound dressing application and ophthalmic applications. So uh, there are many more of uh, the research uh, projects that we are doing in using those knowledge. That's interesting, Professor. Could you please tell us more about the challenges that you have to face to come to this question? Okay. Well, uh, so there were, there were so many challenges, of course, because when we came from the University of Cambridge uh, to join the Department of Chemistry, and so after being exposed to these uh, state of the art laboratory facilities. So we found the department is deprived in many ways because those days the, the, the research was not given priority. So the facilities were minimal. But the other, on the other hand, we are supposed to design uh, projects, research projects for honors degree students because in the honors degree pr uh, program, there's a research project 
one year research project so we have to we are supposed to design that research project with students so then the challenge is to i mean we couldn't do any of any of the work that we have carried out in our phd studies here because no facilities are there for for us to continue those uh, work therefore we had to adapt ourselves for the facilities available at the department so we had to go through and find out what are the chemicals available in the department and what are the facilities available in the de- department and accordingly we design a uh, research projects and these research projects are basically to provide the necessary skills for those students to our bonus degree students to go and excel their career in uh, phds but uh, you know now that none of these research projects are up to the uh, international standard so you couldn't publish data because if you are a good scientist you have to publish your work to the international community that's very important but so we our projects our facilities are not you know like uh, enough uh, uh, or not up to the standard to publish international journals so then th- that was a big challenge for us so then we found now the the facilities are not available to do you know like advanced chemistry projects in the department but that time the computer facilities were there the computers were available so we thought okay why not do the reactions inside the computer that mean uh, theoretical chemistry so we switch on to the chemist computational chemistry they are on and then we publish we managed to publish very good international publication through this computational uh, chemistry uh, uh, the research project so that that is you know in so time you know it's it's very important to have you know, not to have facilities in the department because when there are no facilities you found there are so many obstacles so then you try to harness your power within you you know you can and then you try to understand and try to have alternative so that's the again skill development so everything happens for the best and then again so that uh, then after we went to i went to america so and then uh, after this period we went to america again to do my post doctoral uh, research and then uh, there of course i exposed to as i told you the nano science and nanotechnology and then i found when we came from the from america we found the, the it is easy to do nano material research the nano materials in synthesis of nano materials it doesn't require very sophisticated instruments or techniques so i started nanotechnology and nano research in 20, 2007 and then then the challenge you know it was even bigger because we can synthesize materials but to characterize them none of the met- none of the facilities were available in sri lanka within sri lanka no facilities were available to characterize nano materials so it's a big challenge for us so what we did was so then we had some collaborations of we were coming from cambridge and the other university from america so we had some collaborators so we brought to them so okay now you help us to to characterize these materials with your uh, uh, the, the the facilities and then we we just had this collaboration we started collaborations with the other international uh, universities to do our research works to do our re- the high class research and so we have to have collaborations with these uh, universities and um, okay so and there is another thing now so we are now having collaborations it's fine that we are doing our research and we are con- i mean uh, we are publishing our work but the problem is we our one of our dreams was to establish a state of the art laboratory in the department itself and so but that we needed a lot of money for that one. and university is not giving that money so only alternative is to find some grants and in sri lanka the national science foundation and national research council they provide us with grants if you you are supposed to write a very excellent proposals for that one so we were very happy that we are proud to say that our proposal that we wrote to the national research council was highly appreciated and we we received 50 million rupees uh to do our uh, under target oriented research grant so there are two targets to achieve for that one okay we are having the targets now ready 
and anyway uh, so that money and that that money we utilize to give the birth to this candy you know this center for advanced microstructures and diva my center for advanced materials and devices the candy is the result of that a 50 million grant so it's a state of the art laboratory and now we have, we have achieved our dreams so those are the obstacles and the challenges that we had throughout our journey up to now wonderful professor can you please explain us about the department how we said the department works and about its legacy uh well uh the you know the chemistry department colombo university chemistry department is the oldest in sri lanka and one of the best i would say and uh, and as far as science faculty is concerned uh, chemistry department is the largest department and uh, we do have uh, 26 lecturers in house lecturers and then all these lecturers have got their phd's from high class universities in the world from best universities in usa and uk and australia and canada and in japan so we have the best of best in the department and then in addition to that one we do have a the junior academic staff members like in 24 numbers and their duties are you know like to to conduct practical classes and help in conducting practical classes and also as is doing tutorial classes for undergraduate students so and again in addition to that one uh, in the laboratory we do have a laboratory supporting staff and they are like you know uh, basically the they are doing the laboratory cleaning that we have lab the you know, lab attendants as well as uh, technical officers to take care of the laboratories and uh, so uh, okay so and uh, so that's the that's the obviously that is our strength and as far as you have you said about the programs in the department that's very important to tell about the programs and we do have uh, five honors degree programs in the department and we offer those five degree five honors degrees uh, for chemistry species for students who are coming to the faculty of science as uh, science stream students and then though if i name them the we do have chemistry special and molecular biology and biochemistry special and we have pharmacy special and uh, and we have computation and special degree program and also we have a industrial oriented biotechnology and uh, bio, bio 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 molecular biology and biotechnology program so those are the five programs that we conduct and per given year we are taking 90s honor students to to do this uh, uh, studies so at at a given time we cater for around around 650 uh, students from all over the from other degrees as well so, so the, and and okay that's the the department uh, about the department and talk when about the legacy chemistry department boast of having a legacy of producing great scientists so we have a lot of great scientists and and i would like to highlight uh, two of them and uh, uh, late uh, dr devanand he he contributed immensely to the development of electrochemistry this is the discipline in chemistry and also he developed this triple layer theory he he developed that theory and this triple layer theory is there in all these textbooks in advanced electrochemistry textbooks in all over the world so all over the world the undergraduate students are learning this uh, uh, the theory of triple layer theory and currently i am honored i am very honored and then uh, to to introduce one of the greatest scientists that the chemistry department had produced he is he is the professor Prasanna Nidhi Silva uh, currently is working as emeritus professor uh, at the Belfast at the Queen's University in Belfast in Northern Ireland and he actually he was one of the pioneers in developing uh, logic molecular logic gates and in fact his name has been suggested for nobel prize in several occasions and so he's i have to say in my personal life he's the most humble genius person i have ever met even even at present we have world class scientists in the department and for example last year in 2022 uh 
two, top two and top two percent world class scientist list. Professor Narendra Silva was there in the top two percent world class scientist list. So we are keeping on producing the best and world class scientists, in, you know, like again and again in the department. That's interesting, Professor. And obviously, you have worked in the city for quite a long time. Can you please share some of the experiences and some of the iconic moments that you found during this time? Okay, thank you. So I have been working at the Department of Chemistry for more than 25 years. And first as a external lecturer, and then as a professional lecturer, and then as a lecturer, and then as a professor, and now as the head of the and head of department. So if I recall my undergraduate memories, because I was in fact a under in fact, an undergraduate student of the same department. And this, these memories were lovable and it's they really, you know, like uh, happy to uh, recall those memories because unlike your time, our time, we didn't have the smartphones with us. So whenever we get a break, we would go out and play with our friends and crack jokes, have plenty of fun, plenty of fun. You had plenty of fun and we got a very nice social interactions. And uh, so it was really, really nice to, uh, you know, like uh, to think about those days, good old days, days. And other thing is now very important thing happened during my undergraduate career is that I met my lover, my boyfriend. And he's my husband now, and he's the chair professor of the you know of the department of chemistry, and his name is Professor Nalini Silva. Um, and and even now we are having a fantastic time with our students because uh, whenever you know every year we are getting a new set of students, and so and sometimes they have the kind of you know they would uh, prepare uh, like you know. Uh, Surprise birthday party, birthday parties for us, and surprise, and we are also having dancing parties with them. Like we give graduation parties for them, and they give parties for us. So during those days, those times, you know, we used to dance with them, so have fun with them. So every moment in the department is, uh, we, I, I, I'm cherish. I would like to cherish every moment in the department. I'm still happy, and I'm still uh, having a very nice. Uh, time in the department. Wonderful, Professor. Uh, could you please uh, briefly describe some of the most significant research findings or projects that are done on the chemistry part? Uh, yes. Uh, as I told you, our department is uh, there. There are there are so many uh, lecturers, and these the, these lecturers are coming from different fields of chemistry. So we do have now. Like, great variety of research projects and so and this just span across uh, you know various fields and if i look at my field because um i am because i told you like nanotechnology and nano research is very easy to do in the laboratories because they don't you do need the sophisticated instruments as such and so this nano uh, and so nanomaterials now our our expertise is material sciences so we produce we synthesize a variety of materials advanced materials in way you know like in various you know like to do various uh, applications now if i name them you know like the we just uh, synthesize advanced materials for water purification and also we synthesize materials to achieve targeted and sustain drug deliveries and as i told you earlier we are also having uh, uh, experiences in electrospin electrospun materials for wound dressing applications and uh, other applications so so it's just uh, our fields are very diverse we have diverse research fields in the department of chemistry and and breakthroughs you said you know like what are the breakthroughs in our research so as i told you earlier so that uh, we we received this this nrc national research council grant of 50 million to achieve two targets number one target is to develop a water filter not a, just a normal water filter. These filters are to are for the people who are suffering from kid, chronic kidney diseases, disease of unknown etiology. We call it CKDU. 
So if you look at North Central Province in Sri Lanka, it was a huge problem. So we were given this money to make a, to give a solution for those people who are suffering from CKDU. So now our ta- then we found we had to f- identify what are the causes in water in order to like develop this filter and then we found when we went through the literature published literature and on the water uh, quality data and then we found the number one problem in this kid- in kidney disease is the f- uh, like drinking uh, like you know like uh, hard water with fluoride rich hard water drinking fluoride rich hard water so if you want to develop a water filter so our material should be capable of removing all this hardness water hardness as well as fluoride so we we so in in order to achieve this target we have developed the advanced materials and we have so many publications uh international publications relevant to those materials and so also we have developed our final target and we are at the edge of uh, commercializing it and the second one is very important second uh, target under this particular project was to uh, develop sensors develop sensors to identify heavy metals in water and one of my research uh, students phd research students is mr Lalin Kaherat, he developed a bio genetically modified bacteria and genetically modified uh, zebrafish just to detect the heavy metals in water. The beauty of this one is when you put this bacteria to this water sample, whatever the water sample coming from, any, any, whatever the source, you just put this bacteria into the water, into water and then you know according to the amount of cadmium or whatever the other heavy metals present so this will eliminate light that we call it fluorescence so this light signal will be converted mathematically to a the to show us what levels are there whether it is in ppm level parts per million levels or whether it is in parts per billion levels so very sensitive instrument and you can see uh, and and if you want and this is uh, uh, the beauty of the other, other uh, of this particular gadget is it's it's movable it's just a portable device and you can uh, carry out you can take this one to the to your whatever the site and do the on site uh, detection if you want to uh, do the heavy metal detection at the laboratory you need a very sophisticated instruments such as atomic absorption spectrophotometer but this device is even sensitive than uh, the levels that can be detected through these uh, instruments. Okay, Professor. Nowadays, most of the aerospace students that are doing science stream assume that they think there is no other option or a career if they bring it to a medical faculty or engineering faculty. What are your thoughts on that? And Professor, what are the facilities provided by the chemistry department on this matter? Okay. Well, Shian, uh, that was a major problem in Sri Lanka because I think the students are driven by their parents. Uh, parents want to achieve their expectations through students. Uh, think because parents know, they, they think the only possibility is to go to the top of the ladder. If it is a bioscience stream, go to the medical faculty. If it's a mathematics stream, go to the engineering faculty. But you have to, you have to know there are plenty of opportunities at the next levels, at the lower levels. So, and because now, so with the emergence of the new technologies such as biotechnology, nanotechnology, artificial intelligence and robotics, these professions will no longer be glamorous because in the next 20 years, the world will be a different place and you have to be extremely smart to face this world and you have to have a breadth of knowledge in all these fields to overcome and face the challenges with confidence. So when you come to the science faculty, you know, if you look at the science faculty, whatever the degree program, you can see there are plenty of opportunities given in the faculty. For an example, now uh, in the Colombo chemistry department, we, if you look at, we take uh, 24 students to do chemistry special degree. And these 24 students, students they will be studying the, the theory, chemistry theory, as well as research projects and during their four-year career 
and so these research projects are in world class in in par with the class world class uh, research so they these students will get accepted to all these top class universities in the world uh, for an example uh, two years back our one of our students was accepted by the MIT Massachusetts Institute of Technology in USA and then Oxford and Cambridge and uh, uh, British Columbia Canada and uh, University of uh, Mi- Michigan State and uh, Narbonne and Chicago University all these are top 10 universities so our students will be accepted by all these top class universities because of the knowledge that they gain from the chemistry field that is as far as chemistry is concerned but we have i mean five of other uh, special degree programs as well so most 90% of the students who wants to go abroad can they can go abroad and study and in phd they can do phd's after phd's they can fit into all the various fields in technology in medicine in 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 science so the opportunities are immense as i mentioned earlier uh uh we have five honors degree programs and these honors degree students will be selected based on their first and second results and so we offer chemistry uh, honors degree program molecular biology and biochemistry pharmacy computational chemistry program and also if you want to go to industry we do have industrial oriented uh, biotechnology program as well so there are five and these so under and you know during your during their undergraduate uh, the the research project there is a one year research project so they will get exposed to uh, the the in depth knowledge in that particular field if you look at that if it is a materials if it is material chemistry so they have to start from the scratch you know bottom bottom up synthesis and then you have to you know, identify synthesize the material and then they identify the characteristics and techniques and as far as these characteristics and techniques are concerned in the uh, currently we have uh, xrd machines and also xrf machines and also other uh, facilities are available for characteristics techniques and as well as the physics department we have the collaborations with the physics department to get the thermogrammetric analysis so we have a sound um, you know like better facilities nowadays to do high class research in the department of chemistry you see onward department department of chemistry has started an external degree in chemistry and this is basically for those students who could not get into the university system and who can't get into the university system due to this high competition and uh, for this uh, uh, the degree you need only three passes in your a level and they are and this is a three year degree but there are so many options if you want to go to the uh, end of the study that means you can go and do the bsc the three year degree and there are uh, msc programs in the department of chemistry and by the time uh, the the students are going to pass out there will be three M- four five all together five msc programs in the department of chemistry so you can fit into one of those msc programs and then even go to the after msc you can go and do your phd if you really want to continue your studies Thank you so much for the valuable inf- information, Professor. And as a last question, can you give a small advice to the A-level students that are willing to come to this faculty? Oh, well, uh, Sihan, uh, uh, so my the best advice for a student, for a A-level student, when they come to any any university, not only to this university, to any program, you have to remember, you have to do your studies very well. because education is the only way forward and you have to dedicate dedication is very important commitment and dedication is extremely important and remember uh, whatever you do you have to be outstanding and excellent and so you have to be extremely academically sound so that's number one so for that to that to to do that you have to participate all the lectures and you know if unless you are sick you can just uh, come regularly and attend to classes lectures and practicals regularly and then try to do your best that's number one advice as far as uh, scholastic activities are concerned now the second one is if you want this the, you have to feel the second half that is a one half one of the half of your life the second half is the social skills 
it's extremely important to develop these social skills. How to develop these social skills? So in the, in the Colombo University, there are plenty of opportunities to develop your, the other social skills. Number one is sports. You, you name any sports, I think the Colombo University is having those facilities. So that you can do a lot of sports here. And not only sports, if you're good at dancing and singing and music, you can play, uh, you can have, you can play instruments and plenty of activities where you get to interact with your peers. And this human touch is extremely important because now when you are, when you are keeping and when you are like uh, interacting with your peers, you get to know all the problems in the society. Because then whenever these problems come to you, you know these are the problems that exist in the department, exist, sorry, exist in the society. So you would not get yourself depressed. So it's a balanced life. In order to get the balanced life, you need to excel in, not in both in studies as well as in social uh, skills. Extremely important. And the other thing is now, not only this, so, so one, when you are having the social skills, it's, you are developing the other half of your life and then then you will be a, like usually we say your right brain is responsible for the academic activities but your left brain is uh, responsible for all the other social and soft skills activities you if you want to become a balanced person you have to develop both sides of your brain so that's extremely important because if you are a balanced person you are you are a happy person and remember other thing is now not only those things and you have to concentrate and inculcate other good virtues in your life what are those those are the kindness empathy and you have to you have the you have to help each other you have to have that kindness and share your knowledge share your materials share your money or your food with your friends and in the university you are encountering uh, the students from you know, there's a huge diversity in the university because the some are, you know, the, the, the students come in from different economical backgrounds, different cultures, different environments, and it's it's just the place for you to, you know, achieve these social skills and achieve all these, uh, you know, uh, problems, and then you develop yourself to withstand and then to ha become a happy person. And then also you, and the other important thing is now, you try to become yourself. Don't try to become someone else because you have to understand what are the, what is the strength within you and you unleash that strength. Then that for that one, you, you have to understand that one. So you, then you will not get like, you know, like this bad qualities like jealousy, hatred and aversions. This will not be there because, and that's very important because, uh, Jealousy is the useless exercise and you you will be a happy person in order to become a happy person you have to balance everything in your life and in Columbia University is the right place to uh, get all these uh, qualities. Thank you for your insights Professor Robin and who is currently working as the department head of chemistry. It's been a pleasure discussing your work and expertise with you today. I know. It is a pleasure and I would like to thank uh, Science Association of Royal College and especially Asit Mika, you know you were working tirelessly to get this into materialized and so good luck with your future endeavors. Thank you. Thank you so much, please. And also for the viewers of this video series, thank you for joining with us today. Hope you have a wonderful time. The History 23 organized by the Royal College Science Association. Till we meet again.
Yeah.